Hi, folks. The program originally canceled for this time will now be heard. <laughs> <laughs> and here it is, the Johnson Wax program with Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Marion and Jim Jordan as Fibber McGee and Molly with Jimmy Shields and Billy Mills Orchestra. The show opens with Love is Sweeping the Country. problem that faces everybody at this time of the year, how to remember to write 1940 instead of 1939. Well, here's something you might try. Get a pencil and paper and write this sentence 20 times. During 1940, I will not scrub my linoleum. When you've finished with that one, write this sentence just once. During 1940, I will keep my linoleum bright and spotless with Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. Then, if you haven't any glow coat in your house, order some from your dealer right away. And start the year with a cheerful, colorful kitchen floor. Glow coat will save you many hours of work during 1940. It does away with tiresome floor scrubbing, and it's so easy to use. There's no rubbing or buffing with glow coat. You simply apply it to your clean floor, and in 20 minutes it dries all by itself, leaving a beautiful, gleaming surface. A glow-coated floor is easy to keep clean, too, because spots and stains quickly wipe up with a damp cloth. What's more, Glow Coat will make your linoleum last longer and will keep your kitchen a pleasanter place to work in. All these benefits are yours when you use Johnson's self polishing Glow Coat. and a wonderful thing what a set of Christmas gift carpenter's tools will do for a guy who ordinarily couldn't split a shingle or pound a nail through a sponge cake. For instance, here at 79 Wistful Vista, one with a saw in his hand and the other with apprehension in her eye, we find Fibber McGee and Molly. This is a wonderful set of tools you give me for Christmas, Molly. I'm just itching to fix something. Well, just scratch yourself and put that saw away. <laughs> hey, Molly, ain't that dining room table a little wobbly? Ain't one leg shorter than the other? No, dearie, no, no. It's all right. It looks to me it's like... It's wonderful. Perfectly solid. But that leg... I that... never saw a table as substantial. Yeah, but look... Just good. forget it, dearie. I'll bet if I saw the three other legs off even, it'd take the wobble out of it. Now, please, McGee, you tried that once with the coffee table, remember? I did? Yes, and the legs got shorter and shorter till we had to use it for a serving tray. <laughs> Chucks, what'd you give me the tools for if you don't want me to use them? Like giving a kid a new drum and then telling him to be quiet because Papa's got a headache. Yeah. Well, for heaven's sake, you don't have to fix things, do you? Why don't you make something? Well, what'll I make? Make a bookcase. Make anything. Build a doghouse. Oh, doghouses. That's kid stuff. I should waste those wonderful tools on a mutt mansion. <laughs> McGee, stop that. Huh? You're making big dents in that chair. Well, this arm is loose. I was just hammering it tight. You see how it is now? You couldn't pull it loose with a tin... Now you see what you did? Good. Now I can take that chair down in the basement and really go to work on it. <laughs> McGee, I won't let you do it. That read it, Molly. There you go again. Always holding me down. <laughs> Where would Rembrandt have been if his wife had complained about his paints always smelling up the house? 
Well, nevertheless, you'll have to use your constructive genius on something besides my furniture. Okay, okay, okay. I'll build a doghouse. What kind of dogs do you like? Well, I think Pomeranians are cute. Or Pekingeses. <laughs> you call them things dogs? <laughs> Why, they're so small, a mama flea won't let the baby fleas go out and play because they might get Pomeranians on us. <laughs> I like a man's dog. Maybe an Irish setter, or a wolfhound, or a bugle. Beagle. Well. <laughs> Beagle. Gee, I don't care if you get a saint roll out the barrel of Bernard. <laughs> it's your dog house and your dog. Okay, Mrs. McGee. I'll start right away on the project. Now, let's see. <laughs> First, I gotta call the lumber company and order some lumber. Hand me the phone. All right. Hello, operator. Give me the whistle of Mr. Lumber... Co oh, is that you, Mert? <laughs> Sir McGee. How's things, Mert? <laughs> What'd you do on New Year's Eve, Mert? <laughs> oh, now, Mert, you didn't really. Heavenly days. Now what? What say, Mert? All drunk, eh? Oh. <laughs> what? The neighbors called the police. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Disgrace. What do you know about that, Molly? What? They were going to have a party at Mert's house, but they found the root beer was all drunk. Oh. <laughs> Everything was so quiet, the neighbors got worried and called the police. <laughs> oh, oh, hello, lumber company. This is Fibber McGee, 79 Whistle Vista. Say, I'm building a dog house, and I want you to send me some lumber. Huh? No, no, a dog house for a dog. Yeah, get it right out here, will you? Okay, Bloom. Thanks. Well, thank goodness you're really going to do something constructive. I'll say I am. This is going to be the doghouse of doghouses. A canine Taj Mahal. I'm going to build it with a guest room in case Glowcoat wants to have a friend over for the weekend. Glowcoat? Yeah, that's what I'm going to call our dog, Glowcoat. So he won't scratch. Uh... I hate a mutt that has to keep rubbing and buffing himself all the time. <laughs> now, let's see. Where did I put that? Stuff? Come in. Oh, hello there, little girl. Hi, mister. What you doing? Who, me? Well, who'd you think, Pinocchio? <laughs> Don't be so impertinent. Well, gee, I... Hmm? I said, don't be so fresh. Mm, you said impertinent first. <laughs> well, so what? What's the difference? Well, <laughs> you sound awful silly, I bet you, if you ask the grocery man for a dozen impertinent eggs. <laughs> dear, dear. That's kind of far-fetched, sis. Not for my grocery. It's right around the corner. <laughs> hey, Where'd you get the tools, mister? Where'd you get them, hmm? <laughs> Santa Claus brung them. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> now, listen, sis, I I'm very busy today. What was it you wanted? You want to buy a poem? A poem? Who wrote it? I did, I bet you. I write dandy poultry. You mean poetry, not poultry. What's the difference? Well, you'd know if you ever tried to fricassee a sonnet. <laughs> well, okay, sis, let's hear the poem. Okay, mister. Can I have some music with it? No, read it raw. <laughs> All righty. Title. Mm -hmm. My New Year Resolution. Oh, yeah. When every New Year comes around, folks say I always can be found. With pen and paper on the table, making up some peachy resolutions, the very best that I'm ever able. <laughs> hey, you got a got a kind of a poetic Charlie horse in that last line. Too. <laughs> it, it sort of limps. <laughs> <clears throat> Don't be impertinent. <laughs> to continue, I write down ten things I must do. To start the year all bright and new. Then tear them up as is my custom. 
Because I know darn well I'm going to bust them. <laughs> the end. You want to buy it, mister? No. Okay, I'll give it to you. Here. <laughs> doghouse right here at the corner of the garage. See? Oh, yeah. I'm going to build it with a big living room, a sleeping room, a dining room. A dining room for a dog? Certainly, and he's going to get plenty to eat, too. You know the old saying, it takes a heap of liver to make a dog a home. Uh... <laughs> Don't you get it, Molly? It takes a heap of liver to... funny, m- McGee. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> dumb animals, dumb jokes. See. Here, take one end of this tape, Molly. <laughs> Grandma, but ain't you a little late? This is the 2nd of January. So what, Sonny? Better late than sober is what I always say. <laughs> Whoopee! What do you always say? I always say age before beauty, but you're the first one I've ever seen that got it that way. <laughs> I'm thumping them in there tonight. Oh, boy. <laughs> Here's a toast to New Year. Friends, may I... Hey, look out, Grandma. Look, your cigarette. It's burning... What? A... What's that? Hey, oh, ouch. Doggone it, I burnt the toast. <laughs> oh, well. Happy New Year, everybody. Nineteen forty would introduce a lot of wrinkles, but I didn't expect them to walk right into our own backyard. <laughs> well, come on, McGee, get busy. The doghouse, remember? Oh yes, the doghouse. Well, in the first place, I well, got a hello this... there, Molly and Fibber. What goes on? Oh, McGee is building a doghouse, Mister Wilcox. What kind of dog has he got? Well, he hasn't got one yet. I ain't quite decided what kind. I think you ought to have a good hunting dog. Would you be interested in a pointer? Oh, boy, I sure would. You know anybody that's got a good pointer for sale, Harlow? Well, I'll give you one, free. Oh, how oh, wonderful. Well. Don't forget to use Johnson's glow coat on your kitchen linoleum, because when a dog tracks dirty and it can easily be wiped up with a damp cloth, you know. <laughs> and his claws, his claws won't scratch a floor that's glow coat protected. Say, that's a good idea. Sure. And you know how easy it is to use Johnson's glow coat. Just pour a few drops on the floor and yes. spread it around, and it dries to a beautiful gleaming luster in 20 minutes or less. Well, we'll certainly do that, Mr. Wilcox. Yeah, well, when can I see the dog, Harlow? What dog? I thought you were going to give us a pointer. I just did. Use Johnson's glow coat. <laughs> that's the finest pointer I could give anybody. So long, folks. Come on, Dad. That's I'll be a series of dashes. <laughs> I would like to get a hold of a good pointer, though, Molly. I had one years, no, years ago, you know. Oh. Old Matt. Matt? Mm-hmm. I suppose you called him Matt because he was always laying in front of the door. <laughs> No, his real name was Man About Town, but I just used his initials, M-A-T. 
<laughs> Matt was the smartest pooch I ever seen. He used to step in the wings of the theater when I was playing vaudeville and watch my act. Well, he was not only smart, but courageous. <laughs> Well, sir, one day in the middle of my act, who should come walking out on the stage but Matt? He just stood there, stiff as a board, nose pointing out into the audience, tail out straight like a ramrod. What did the audience do? Put his hat on and go home? <laughs> just then, a guy in the third row stood up and gave me a Bronx cheer, a raspberry. Imagine a dog sensing that. What do you mean, sensing that? He was a hunting dog, and he knew I was going to get that bird. Oh, uh... <laughs> Oh, wait a minute, McGee. Look who's coming around the house. Uh Uh-oh, Mrs. Uppington. It's a quick trick in clubs. Right. Oh, how do you do, Mrs. Uppington? So nice to see you. How do you do, Mrs. McGee? And Miss McGee? Hi, Uppy. Uh, How do you like the Beagle Pavilion I'm building? Oh, the doghouse. Is that what that is? Uh Well, I thought it was... Oh, oh. Well, I I just thought I'd drop by and give you my best wishes. (laughs) Now, stop me if you've heard it, but... New Year. <laughs> well, thanks, Uppy, and to coin a phrase, the same to you. And if I may phrase a coin, e pluribus unum. Oh, oh how delightful. Phrase a coin. Yes. All right. Well, how'd you celebrate New Year's Eve, Uppy? Uh, well, my young nephew, Father and Gil Uppington, was home from college, and he took me to the most delightful place. I don't quite remember the name of it, but I think he said we were going to a place called Tom and Jerry's for some Jack and Charlie's. <laughs> Oh, McGee and I had a wonderful time, too. We had a wrong side table at a nightclub. <laughs> Ringside, Molly. There was nothing wrong with that table. In fact, we were so close to the orchestra, I let the clarinet player cool my coffee. <laughs> Did you have a good time, Uppy? Oh, my dear, I must have had. Because my nephew told me the next morning he never heard anyone play the snare drum the way I did. <laughs> Oh, you better watch out, Uppy. You're in danger of losing your social dignity. After all, you've got to keep up the aristocratic tradition of Wistful Vista, you know. Oh, thank you, Mr. McGee. That's so sweet of you. Do you really consider me an aristocrat? Why, certainly he does, Mrs. Uppington. In fact, Uppy, I've heard it said you were so aristocratic, you suffer from blue toothbrush. <laughs> oh. From blue toothbrush? Oh. Well, so you're building a doghouse, are you? And are you familiar with the care and handling of dogs? Who, me? Why, shucks, Uppy. I've been a judge of dog shows ever since I was chin high to a child. I used to get more applause than any dog in the place. Had to take a bow at the end of every show. Oh, I was really a wow. Bow Wow McGee, I was known as an end there. Bow Wow McGee, the biggest breeder of barking brutes that ever busted a biscuit for a Boston bull, badly bitten by big bunches of bad bloodhounds, but bravely breaking them to beg for bones and be benevolent bodyguards to bouncing babies, bandy and bird dogs, boar hounds and beagles with bits of beefsteak and brilliant brain work, and bagging the build up as the brightest boy of the beast bossers from the brown and billows of Bimini Bay to the Let's Have a Song, folks. What do you say? <laughs> I went away, one thing is clear to me, you were dearer than dear to me, from the moment you came. Evenings by your side, I learned to love the night, but the loveliness of the night is no longer the same. When day is done and shadows fall, I dream of you. When day is done, I think of all the joys we knew that yearning. My lonely heart is sinking with a song. Oh, how I miss your tender kiss the whole day through. I miss
Yeah. Now, look at that now. What? I saw this two-by-four off three times, and it's still too short. <laughs> well, keep trying, dearie. What's all this metal grill work for? Oh, that, huh? I'm going to build a fire escape on one side of the doghouse. A fire escape? Yeah. What do you expect your Airedale to do, smoke in bed? <laughs> no, but you can't... Oh, there, friends. <laughs> Happy New Year to you. Oh, thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve, and the same to you. And many of them, Gildy, old pal, old pal. Well, thank you, McGee. <laughs> I, I'm glad to see the New Year start so auspiciously. What do you mean? What's so suspicious about building a doghouse? I didn't say suspicious. I said auspicious. That means under good omen. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, good omen. Oh, sure, sure. I catch on to it. Ah, my, my. It's nice to start into 1940 with you two boys friends again. Ah, it certainly is, Mrs. McGee. Definitely. I guess McGee and I just got off on the wrong foot, didn't we, McGee? <laughs> wrong foot is right, Gildersleeve. We was playing double hopscotch on our own bunions. <laughs> Hand me that hammer, will you, bud? I certainly, McGee. Here. Thanks. You say you're building a doghouse, McGee? Yes, he is, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, as I always say, Mrs. McGee... Uh... What, what did you say, Mr. Gildersleeve? Uh, I said it seems to me that the only way... McGee, stop that hammering a minute. Mr. Gildersleeve's trying to talk. What say, Molly? I say stop that hammering. I can't hear what Mr. Gildersleeve is saying. You'll have to talk louder. I can't hear you on account of all that stand around and hammering. Well, you're doing the hammering. Oh, yeah, I guess it was that. <laughs> what was you saying, Gildy? What? Oh, I, uh, uh, <laughs> well, I don't remember now. <laughs> Say, how about letting me help you with this doghouse, McGee? Huh? Oh, I just love to do this sort of thing. You know, I come from a long line of cabinet workers myself. Is that so? Politicians or carpenters? Carpenters. Uh... <laughs> My great-grandfather made the first wooden leg in this state. Is that so? Oh. Oh, you should have seen the hand-carved muscles in the calf. <laughs> Here, let me go to work, McGee. Wait till I take off my coat. Oh, isn't it nice to have Mr. Gildersleeve helping you, dearie? Yeah, it's great. We ought to get it done in twice the time now. Yes, I think so myself. <laughs> now, look here, McGee. <laughs> Excuse me, please, but is this the resident... Is this the resident... Is this the... The somebody... Is this... A... What is the name of the occupant? Who lives here? <laughs> Sir, why? Well, I'm in charge of the tabula of the tabula. I'm employed by the government. The government. I count the. I'm the. I'm the census taker. <laughs> the census taker. Well, you're starting a little early this year, aren't you, my boy? Yeah. Besides that, he's got water in his gas. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll have to come back later, but I'm busy. Anyway, why start here, Mr. Census Taker? Well, maybe I'd better elucidate. Elucidate. Let me explain. I have to get a head start on the other canvas. Canvas. The other census takers. Because we're tally, we're, t we're counting the noses. And the house down the street is a resident. Res well, Jimmy Durante lives there. Good day. Well, I better go in and start dinner, McGee. You go on ahead with your work. Okay, Molly. And I can't tell you how pleased I am to see you and Mr. Gildersleeve so congenial once more. Yeah. Well, Mrs. McGee, it's a new year, you know. I, I like to start off with a clean slate. Uh, clean slate. <laughs> Well, McGee, uh, what do I do first? Uh, just trim off them timbers there, Gildy. You know how to use a cross-cut saw? Why, certainly I do. Just give me that saw. Hey, now, wait a minute. Are you right-handed? What? Uh, yes, I am. Why? Oh, I just wondered. That's a left-handed saw. Oh, it is. Yeah. Careful. Well, I may be a little clumsy at first, but I'll catch on to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go, McGee. Okay. Hi-ho, hi-ho. It's off to work we go. Da 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 Hi-ho, hi-ho, hi-ho. Did I hit your finger, McGee? <laughs> no, you hit your own finger. I did? Oh, so... <laughs> Well, we're doing pretty good at Gildy, old man. At that. Well, Beautiful we certainly job, are, McGee. Eh? Beautiful job. Yes, uh, sir. Maybe we better go into business together, huh? huh? You got the tools and I've got the brain. Uh, well, well, what do we do now? Put the roof on? Yes, we better put the roof on. You hold it while I pound the nails. Oh, no. You hold it while I pound the nails, McGee. You haven't let me pound one nail yet. I love to pound nails, McGee. Well, it's my set of tools, ain't it? You're just selfish, that's what you are. Well, what else? I know more about this business than you do. Is that so? I guess I took manual training in high school, didn't I? And so what? Chucks, they tell me I built my own bassinet when I was eight months old. <laughs> well, I don't care. I want to pound a nail. Oh, stop whining. I'm not whining! 
you were, too. <laughs> Jux, if you want to build something, why don't you go over in your own backyard and build something? Now, look here, McGee. I came over here to help you, and this is all the thanks oh, I get. Oh, yeah? If you want to start fighting again... Oh, yeah. Look, look at here, you, you, you big bully. Here, knock that chip off my shoulder. What? Go ahead. Knock it off. I dare you. I double dare you. Knock it off. <laughs> Okay, McGee, I guess I kind of just flew off the handle. <laughs> you fly off the handle so much, Gildersleeve, you ought to have a pilot's license. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pilot's license. <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> or is it? I don't know. <laughs> All right, you pound the nails, McGee. Okay, let's get... Say, say, wait a minute, McGee. You forgot something. What you mean? The door. Where's the door? Huh? The door. How is your dog going to get in and out? Oh, my gosh, I forgot to saw a door. Now we've got to take the dad dreaded whole thing all down the No, it. we haven't. I'll get inside and saw a hole in the front. Oh, no, you don't, Gildersleeve. Lift the roof off. You want to have all the fun, eh? I'll get inside and saw the door. Oh, gee whiz, McGee. I want to do... Cut it out, Gildersleeve. I guess i got a right to get into my own doghouse, ain't I? Here, help me lift this roof up. Oh, shucks. Okay. Hand me the saw. Here you are, McGee. You better kneel down now so you can see better. Okay, it's not a bad idea. You let me know if I'm getting it even. Don't worry, McGee. I'll see that everything gets even. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? Take that roof off of there. Hey, kill me, please. <laughs> hey. I certainly love to pound nails, McGee. Hey. <laughs> hey, let me out of here. Hey, kill me, please. Hey, McGee. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Now, now quit kidding and let me out of here. I just remembered what I came over here for, McGee. Huh? I hope you have a very... Doggy New Year! <laughs> hi ho, hi ho, and off to work we go! Fibber and Molly will be back in just a moment, but now answer this. Which wears longer, wood or stone? Most people would say stone without much hesitation. And yet, there are, in ancient palaces of Europe, wooden floors that are still intact and beautiful, while the stone steps outside have worn away during the centuries. In fact, in the beautiful new Johnson office building at Racine, Wisconsin, there is a section of one of those old floors over 400 years old. It's still in excellent condition and mellow and rich in its beauty, because all during those years it was protected with wax. In our American homes, we can have beautiful floors with much less work than in those olden days. There are easy-to-use weighted brushes, and there's the Johnson Electric Floor Polisher that you can rent from your dealer at small cost. And every good dealer sells genuine Johnson's wax in either paste or liquid form. With this famous wax polish, you can protect your floors against wear, give them rich beauty, and save yourself hours of housework. And what's more, there are over 100 extra uses for genuine Johnson's wax, such as furniture, woodwork, windowsills, lampshades. You'll find these labor-saving uses listed on the familiar red and yellow Johnson's Wax Package. Try some tomorrow. Beaver! McGee! Where are you, dearie? Here I am. I'm in the doghouse. Well, heavenly days, what are you doing in there? Come on out. I can't. I'm nailed in. Get the tools and try me out. There aren't any tools here. You bad rat that Gildersleeve. Is the show over, Molly? Yes, it is. Why? I just wanted to say, Happy New Year, folks. May your 40 be fair and fat. And the same for me. (laughs) Good night. Good night, all. Carlo Wilcox, inviting you all to join us next Tuesday night at the same time. Good night. This is the National Broadcasting Company.